Hey, what's going on, people? My name is Terrell Andretti, and I'm the Norris Nemesis. If you're watching me on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the content to make sure somebody else gets it, somebody liked it for you. That's how you were able to receive this content, so make sure you like it for somebody else. Y'all take the time right now, hit the like button. It only take two seconds. So y'all make sure y'all hit that button. Again, for those of y'all that don't know, the reason why I'm talking kind of funny is because I just had two jaw surgeries. I had one last week, and I had one probably a couple weeks prior. So, you know, I'm on my 50 cent right now, my Kanye West right now. But uh, anyway, uh, make sure y'all like the video, comment, subscribe. If you need a one-on-one, -on -one, the link is in the description. If y'all want to donate to the channel, you're more than welcome. The link is in the description. Uh, make sure y'all go check out my new single, Superstition. It's out on all platforms. And let's get into it. Uh, the thing that I wanted to talk about today is working your way out of codependency. And what I mean by that is a lot of times, a lot of us end up in these narcissistic situations with these individuals because we are codependent, either fully or to, to a certain degree. Codependent basically means you need other people, because narcissists are codependents too, but they're just on the other end of the spectrum. It means you need somebody's validation. You need somebody's company. You need somebody's intimacy. You need somebody to validate your decisions, your behaviors, your emotions. And it's a basic human instinct to want these things, but wanting and needing something is two completely different things. A lot of y'all are codependent which means y'all y'all depend on the narcissist treatment whether it's good or bad see codependency means you'll put up with somebody's shit good or bad as long as you don't end up by yourself and that's dangerous and it's unhealthy and a lot of y'all are like that because y'all have healing that y'all need to do too we always talk about the narcissist and their healing and their damage that they cause but you also have healing that you need to do. A lot of y'all have too much fucking time on your hands. Again, stay your ass off their social media. You got too much time. A lot of y'all need to be in the gym. Not calling nobody fat, not calling nobody uh, overweight, none of that. I'm specifically telling you that you need to start working on yourself. I don't want to hear I'm tired. I don't want to hear I work too many hours. I don't want to hear I got this, that, and the other thing going on. Because guess what? When you was with that damn narcissist, you made time for them. So make time for yourself and make time for your body. Because when you start working on yourself in the gym, the gym is not just about your physical attributes. The gym is also going to work on you up here. Because if you feel good, you act better. Most of the time. So a lot of y'all, like I said, you need to work your way out of codependency. You need to learn how to enjoy your own company. You need to learn how to be able to go out by yourself. You need to learn how to go on that trip even though all your other friends cancel. You need to learn how to start that new hobby even though everybody else is saying it's not possible for you to do it. A lot of y'all who follow me on Instagram or, you know, my other social medias, when I take pictures, who do y'all see me with? No fucking body. And I'm perfectly fine with that. And I think that helped me discard my ex narc because I was single three years before I, you know, started dealing with her. And I, I didn't have a problem. I wasn't, you know, I was fine. So me going back to being single wasn't an issue. The thing was I wanted to make this situation work so bad because it was somebody that I, I wanted for a while and you know, stuff never just fell in place. And it finally fell in place. So I thought it was, you know, meant to be. So like a normal human being, I'm working for it. I'm working on it. 
But anyway, you gotta be okay with being by yourself. It's not the end of the fucking world. Hell, I enjoy a lot of things better when I'm by myself. Personally, when I'm in a relationship, I get distracted because I'm an entrepreneur. So a lot of people, they want that time. They want this, they want that, they want this, they want that. And I get it. It's natural to uh, compromise. Couldn't get the word out. It's natural to compromise in a relationship. It's natural that you want time with your significant other. But the mission that I'm on as of right now is the most important thing to me because I'm walking in my purpose and I have a job to do, which is teach y'all about narcissism and my music. That's my mission right now and getting closer to God because that's the only way I got out of this situation. That's my mission right now. That's what I'm focused on right now. That's why it's so easy for me to ignore her antics, her phone calls. I'm not on her fucking page. Anybody that she knows, I don't talk to them. Anybody that wants to sit around me and talk about her all day, I don't want to hear that shit. Now, do I have certain conversations about the situation? Yeah, I do. But that doesn't consume my every fucking day. It doesn't consume my every minute. It doesn't consume my every hour. And I'm not down talking anybody for, you know, if it does, because it, it it's a process that you have to go through. And it's a process that I've been through. That's how I can tell y'all this shit. This ain't no... I just snapped my fingers and I was this way. No, I took a lot of blood, sweat, tears, reevaluating, outgrowing. It took a lot of sacrifice. And Halloween, on, on Halloween, on Halloween this year, it'll be two years that I've been single. A lot of y'all can't be single for 30 fucking days. Y'all are looking for the next relationship. If you think about it, it's the same shit that the narcissist is doing. Y'all are just on two different spectrums, ends of the spectrum. They're looking for different people to destroy. You're looking for different people to fill a void. And it's a void that only you can fix. I tell people, nobody can heal you. You and the Most High have to work on healing you. There's no person in this world that can complete you. They can accommodate you. They can compliment you. Your lifestyle, your fit, you know, your emotions, your vibe, your frequency, whatever, they can complement it. You have to complete you. And a lot of times we make this mistake, oh, I gotta find this person that completes me. I gotta find this person that completes me. And then when that shit falls through, you're completely broken because you gave somebody else the other the power to finish you. Can't nobody finish you but you. You are your creation. You are God's creation. Only you and God can finish you. Nobody else can finish you. And when you learn that, that's when you start putting the pieces together. And like, okay, well, I need to get my shit together. Some of y'all want to date, your credit fucked up. Some of y'all want to date, you still stand with your parents. It's nothing wrong with standing uh, with your parents if you're trying to get your shit together. I'm not down talking anybody who's doing that. But what I'm saying is, Evaluate your personal situation by yourself. How is your life without somebody in it right now? And even if you're financially stable, how are you mentally? If you're mentally stable, how are you emotionally? Are you healthy enough for the kind of relationship that you're looking for? Because what we do, oftentimes, relationship problems are single problems that you bring into a relationship and you expect the other partner to fix. Narcissists do this shit and codependents do this shit. You need to break out of that habit. Take accountability and fix your damn self. Especially in the black community. We think therapy is a fucking joke and we do not take therapy seriously. A lot of people make fun of people that go to therapy. Those are the main motherfuckers that's hurt. Those are the main motherfuckers that are not breaking their generational curses. They're getting the short end of the stick in every situation because they are denying that they have an issue. They are denying 
the help that they might need. And I'm not saying everybody needs to go to therapy. Some people can figure it out on their own. But if you're not attempting to figure it out on your own, you're fucking up. Everybody want to, oh, I, I need to get this person. I need to get married. I need to, you don't need to do shit. Get yourself together so you can attract that person. Because if you're ignoring your healing and you're still carrying this pain and this narcissistic residue around with you, you're going to attract another narcissistic person because you're still full of their energy. You need to purge yourself of their energy. You need to cleanse your energy. You need to rebuild yourself. You need to reinvent yourself. Because until you do, you're going to attract the same kind of person in a different body. Or you're going to scare off the person that you're meant to attract because you're carrying around those narcissistic fleas from that other situation. Like I said, do I have certain conversations about, you know, um, shit that happened between me and my ex? Yes, I do. But it doesn't consume my day. And you have to get to a point where that shit does not consume your day. Is it going to take a while? Yes. But some of y'all aren't even starting. Some of y'all got books y'all need to write. Some of y'all got channels that y'all need to start. Some of y'all have music that y'all need to go make. Some of y'all have classes that y'all need to go take. Some of y'all have businesses that y'all need to go start. But you're not starting because you're sitting around and you're letting them consume you and they're not even in your life anymore. A lot of y'all are still with these motherfuckers. If you don't have a kid with this person, and I'm not saying this is easy, but if you don't have a kid with this person, you need to be going no contact. Get your head out of your ass. Stop waiting on them to change. Stop reinventing narcissism in your head to fit the reality that you want to live in. And understand what they are. Understand they're not going to change. You do not have a special narcissist. Once you understand that, you can start making the necessary changes. Once I figured out she... There's no cure for narcissism. There's no uh, reversal, nothing like that. And once I figured out that motherfucker didn't want to go to therapy, it took one last incident, but it, it, it was enough to seal the deal. How many more incidents is it going to take you to seal the deal? You have to start thinking like that. Because I almost ended up in prison fucking with this jackass. Not finna tell y'all the story on camera because not finna uh, incriminate myself, but it almost went down. Because I got that fucking mad and lost that much control of my emotions. Some of y'all need to get a hold of your fucking emotions. For women, I know it's harder because y'all operate off of emotion and guys operate off logic. I know it's hard, but you need to get control of how you feel. I'm not saying your feelings are not valid, but I am saying you need to master them and you need to get control of them because you're going to become a slave to whatever thoughts those feelings produce. And that's going to be, if you can't control your feelings, you're going to stay mentally stuck in whatever time period that you got hurt in. If you do not get control of yourself, if some shit happened to you in 2008 and you cannot control your feelings, you're going to forever be in 2008 up here. If this point in time, 2002, was the best time of your fucking life, if you don't get control of your feelings, you will never outlive 2002. You have to get control of your emotions. You have to rebuild yourself. And rebuilding yourself requires you doing shit that you have not done. The fear that you feel is not real. Get outside of the box. Some of y'all go outside for once in a while. Put the fucking phone down. After you watch my video. But nah, put the phone down. What color is your house? You don't even remember what color your house is because you ain't been outside. Go outside. You ain't got to go date nobody, but go talk to somebody. Go walk, take a walk in the park. Get some fresh air. 
get off of fucking social media. So, social media is kicking a lot of y'all's ass because y'all are sitting in the house, y'all are scrolling, you get to thinking, you putting on Bobby Womack, you putting on fucking, uh, what's the other motherfucker y'all be listening to? Scissor, Summer Walker, uh, and, and, and whoever else y'all listening to, Keisha Cole, and, and all that, and Drake, and, and, and y'all are getting in y'all feelings, and then you start thinking. Then you go to their page. <clears throat> you go on to see what's cracking on their page. Then you pop up, you see the new dude, you see the new chick. Now you're back in your feelings, you done set yourself up. There's nothing on their page that you can see that's going to give you any clarity. If anything is going to give you more questions, on top of the questions that you already don't have answers for. So you're creating a surplus of fucking questions and no answers. Now you're doing it to yourself. Now it's reactive abuse to where you're abusing yourself after they're gone. They don't even have to be here. The ghost of them, the wraith of them is now haunting you because you're not getting control of you. You have to get out of the illusion. You have to unplug from the matrix. You have to want better for yourself. You have to get rid of the illusion that they sold you. It's easier said than done. I'll always say that, but excuse me, it's fucking necessary and it's detrimental to your survival. Like I said, y'all can look at me and I make it look easy. It took and it's taking hell to get over this shit. And it's going to take every fiber in your fucking being to get over this. It's going to take a person that you didn't know was in you to get over this. You're going to have to strap up your boots. This shit is real. <clears throat> and if you do not understand what I'm saying and take heed to what I'm saying, it will fucking consume you and it will destroy you. And you will get to a point where it ain't no fucking return. Before you get to that point, get control of your emotions. Your emotions are valid, but you need to be in control of them. Because if not, they're going to lead you to destruction. That's what's going to give the narcissist ultimate satisfaction. They don't give a fuck if you're sitting around moping and, and fucking crying and listening to fucking uh, Johnny Cash, I hurt myself today. They don't give a damn about that shit. And if they do, it's for a split second. Not enough. So don't think by showing them how hurt you are that you're sticking it to them. The way you stick it to them it's showing them motherfuckers that you built for tough. Showing them you can't be stopped. Showing them that God got his hands on your life. Showing them that everything that they said that you could not be, you're on your way to becoming. And then some. That's how you stick it to them. You stick it to them by acting like them motherfuckers don't even exist. Like you never fucking met them. Because it makes them question their fucking reality. That's what you want them doing. You being sad and, it, it, like I say, do it on your own time. Get that shit out. But don't do it in a malicious way the way you're trying to prove to them, oh, I'm so hurt, I'm so fucked up. You're giving them satisfaction and they don't care like you want them to. And a lot of people say, but you write songs? Yeah, I write songs because I'm telling my story. I don't care if she hears them. She was just dumb enough to leave an artist voicemails. Rule number one, woman or uh, man, don't ever, if you dating an artist, don't leave them no fucking voicemails because you're going on a mixtape, you're going on a song, you're going on something. Don't do it. She didn't get that memo and her ass is on record now. But I don't do that so I can embarrass her. I don't do that so I can stick it to her. I do that. I put that on there so y'all can understand he ain't bullshitting. This shit really happened to him. He ain't just on here, oh, well, he's trying to be YouTube famous or whatever. I give a fuck about being YouTube famous or whatever the case is. I put that voicemail on there so y'all can know, nah, this motherfucker, the, the devil really was in my fucking bed. 
that's proof. I write those songs because I'm telling my story. I write those songs because it's somebody else. It's some other man out there, a black man at that. And it's not singling out anybody. I'm just saying a man that is not afraid to tell his story and hopefully it inspire other men to come out and tell their story amongst women that'll come out and tell their story. It ain't about proving shit to her. I give a fuck less if she listened to a song, hear a song, or any of that. It ain't for her. It's for me. It's for y'all. It's to tell my story. To let y'all know y'all not alone in this shit. Master your emotions. Get control of yourself. Because whoever masters your emotions are the masters of you. Again, y'all make sure y'all take a minute right now to like, comment, and subscribe if you need a one-on-one. -on -one. Tap in with me if you want to donate to the channel. Tap in with me. The link is in the description. Um, make sure y'all go check out my new single, Terrell Andretti, Superstition. It is out on all platforms, and it does feature a voicemail from my ex narc trying to hoover me, and I ain't going for it. Um, again, like, comment, subscribe, and... Another day, another way, and you ain't got to listen, but I know you heard me. Holla.